So if you watch the welcome video on the dashboard, one of the things you would have seen is that I put a lot of emphasis on what I call the big three, which are nomenclature, naming and writing chemical formulas, chemical reactions, and then stoichiometry, which is doing conversions with chemistry. So this is the first of that group. And I start with covalent nomenclature because of the nomenclatures between covalent and ionic, it is the easiest. And so I want to start there just to kind of get us a good foundation. And nomenclature is a skill. It requires practice. So you'll see when you get to the workbook that we're going to start having longer practice in these sections where there's a skill to be developed. And so you'll see that as we go through. So first of all, we got to talk about what is covalent bonding. So the name covalent means having valence electrons in common, a.k.a. sharing electrons. So they're only made from nonmetals, and basically the nonmetals are held together by a covalent bond, which is made of two valence electrons being shared between two atoms. And basically they both kind of get credit for both electrons. You know, maybe this one comes from this atom and this one comes from this, but because they're sharing them, they both get credit for having these two electrons. So these two electrons count for this chlorine atom here, and these two electrons count for this chlorine atom here. Now, it is possible to have more than one bond present, but each bond is only two electrons. All right, so when we write the names for covalent compounds, we use prefixes. And if you're familiar with kind of Greek prefixes or, you know, geometry or some other places, you may have seen these prefixes before. Mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nana, a decad. Um, you got to memorize these. It's pretty essential. Okay, so it works pretty simply like this. So N2O5, I have two nitrogen, so I write the prefix in there, di nitrogen. Okay, I have five oxygens, and then penta is five, and then when you're doing a compound name, you end it in IDE. Um, and you'll kind of get the hang of where to put the IDE just from practice. Um, there's no hard and fast rule of where it goes. It just goes on the end. So in this case, it's not pentaoxide. It's pentaoxide. Okay. Uh, then looking at the second example there, C3H8. So I've got three carbons, and the prefix for three is tri. So tricarbon. And then I have eight hydrogens, so octahydride. All right, and that's how we get our names. Now, there are a couple of rules that go with this. First, the name uses the prefix. This is differentiate between a possible combination. That's why we do this. Um, for example, carbon and oxygen can form two different forms. Carbon monoxide, where I have one oxygen, and carbon dioxide, where I have two. All right, um, when a prefix and an element, like the prefix ends and the element starts with the same letter, Sometimes it's dropped, sometimes it's not. There's no hard and fast rule there. Um, so, like I've heard people say monoxide. I don't think that's horribly wrong. Um, monoxide is how we normally say it. Um, but I think that's just, just normal, not necessarily 100% correct, as opposed to monoxide. I think they're both somewhat valid. All right. So, when there's only one of the first element, it doesn't have a prefix. Notice I don't have monocarbon monoxide, monocarbon dioxide. If there's just one of the first element, we just drop it. Otherwise, there will always be a prefix. So when I have two nitrogens here in the bottom, that's dinitrogen pentaoxide. All right, writing formulas. These are, once again, relatively simple. This is probably the simplest thing you have to do. You just simply do what the prefixes tell you to do. All right, so looking at three examples. Nitrogen trihydride. How many nitrogens? Well, there's no prefix, so there just must be one. How many hydrogens? Three. Okay, otherwise known as ammonia. That's its common name. Okay, disilicon, hexabromide. Di means two, so two silicons. Six bromines gives you Si2Br6. And then xenon hexafluoride, one xenon, six fluorines, and there you have your name. All right? So that is the basis of just doing names and formulas with covalent compounds. Um, it is relatively straightforward, pretty simple. You need to memorize your prefixes, 
And you need to remember that if there's only one of the first element, it doesn't have a prefix. And then you got to end in IDE. So those three things are the things that tell you how to do covalent formulas.